Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all having a great day. So in the last video that I did, I expected there to be some pushback on a number of things, but the statement that really got the most pushback that I was very surprised at was the statement that we don't have affordable electric vehicles yet. And I was very surprised, given the landscape of the general market now, to realize that a lot of people disagreed with me when I made that statement. And I wanted to go over that in this video. To be clear, I just want to discuss a few points before I get into the topic of today's video. The first is that, yes, I am an electric vehicle fanboy. I'm not a fanboy of any one particular cost, uh, company. I just like electric vehicles. Whether it is a phase runner from ebikes.ca and a BBS HD motor that I put on my bike, or a Sabaton controller with a Cyclone motor on my bike, or a Zero motorcycle, or a Ford Mach-E, or a Tesla Model 3, I find electric vehicles to be interesting and excited. So I do have a bias there. The second is that I'm not very knowledgeable when it comes to cars and automobiles. So if I get something wrong, A, I'm not claiming I'm an expert, I'm just trying to come at this from the standpoint of your average everyday consumer, and B, if I do get something wrong when it comes to automobiles, please do correct me and I will pin the comment with the corrections. So what I want to do here is I really want to try and get inside the head of somebody that's looking to purchase a car that is either poor or lower middle class, and I want to show you why it is I stand by that statement I made when it comes to the affordability of electric vehicles. I like electric vehicles, and I'd like to see them get more adoption. The problem is you're not going to get people to adopt something or agree with you or be open to what you're saying if they feel like they're being gaslit. So one example, when inflation is increasing the cost of housing, rent, all these things that are like really matter to people, uh, and the White House had a choice. you know, They could tweet out, this is an issue, I get it, here's what we're doing to address it. Or they could tweet out, cheese is like 1% cheaper this year than it was last year. Y you understand, you it's important to not gaslight people. So I just wanted to give you a basic idea of the way that I see it, and you tell me how you see it. Now I have a friend who is a multi-multi-millionaire. This guy's way more successful than I am when it comes to finances, and he still drives a Volkswagen Jetta. He will replace his Jetta a little more often than your average person, but he still drives a $19,000 car because he, I don't know, he's, just, he's a giant fanboy of the Jetta. He loves his Jetta. He says that it almost never breaks down. In the rare case, it does need service. He's able to get service very quickly and affordably. He just likes his Jetta. So I decided to use that as a starting point as an affordable vehicle. And you can see here, starting MSRP of $18,995. And if we do just a little bit of basic research on it, how many miles you get a gallon, and looks like you get I don't know, approximately, let's just say 29 miles a gallon. It has a 13.5 gallon gas tank. Let's just lower that down on a 13 just to make it round. So 13 gallons of gas times 29 miles per gallon you get 377 miles of range in this vehicle. Approximately 377 miles of range for $18,995. Now, let's look at many of the major automakers and let's just see what it would be like if you were to use the car for a something like a cross-country road trip. I did not get a car because I want to drive around New York City. That is hell. I can take my e-bike and I can get anywhere in the city faster than anybody with a car because I can get around traffic in a way that you can't. I got a car because I wanted to explore the rest of the country. I wanted to explore Wisconsin, Tennessee, Florida, South Dakota, New Hampshire, and I wanted to be able to drive around a little bit. Now, there is a website called PlugShare.com, which is really cool because this website allows you to check out different types of chargers so that you can get an idea of where you can go and where you can't go. It allows you to see all the different types of chargers. It allows you to choose the minimum power of these chargers. So I decided to set my threshold at 50 kilowatts. Anything under 50 kilowatts, in, in my opinion, you are gonna have a very, very, very painful time doing a road trip. Because you know, if, if we're talking about like a six kilowatt or a four kilowatt or an eight kilowatt charger, you're gonna be staying overnight. I don't consider that to be viable for a cross country road trip. At least with 50 kilowatts and above, you have the option at that point to be able to wait for an hour or two hours and then get back on your trip. And with Tesla with 120 kilowatt and 250 kilowatts, those you can often just charge for 20 minutes and then go back on your trip. So let's just take a look over here. Let's say I wanted to travel, I don't know, let's say from Sydney to Bozeman, Montana, something like that. So if I wanted to travel from Sydney, Montana, and I wanted to go to Bozeman, Montana, let's just get an idea of how far that is. I'm gonna do that on this little map. And as you can see, this is a 400 
an 11-mile trip. And one of the things that you'll notice over here is that if you do want to take that type of trip, you are stuck either carrying a, a gas-powered generator with you that you're going to use, which uh, nobody's going to do that, or you are going to be stuck staying at some place overnight to charge because you have to lower this to uh, zero, and then you get more, much more places, but they're all slow. Or you need to buy a Tesla. Because again, if I, once I add Tesla charging in here, you'll see that you can actually make it that 400 miles. You can charge here, here, here. When you take out Tesla charging, doing a cross-country road trip in many parts of the country becomes impossible due to how sparsely laid out the other electric vehicle charging stations actually are. Now, I know what you're saying. You're thinking, well, Tesla's opening up their superchargers to everybody else. Yeah, at a couple of pilot locations in the Netherlands. And if you follow Elon Musk's timelines for when he says something will be done and when it actually gets done, um, you're probably not holding your breath anytime soon. So if you wanted to do a cross-country road trip, at, let's say this section of the country, at this point, you are essentially locked into either A, waiting overnight and stopping along the way, which I think for most people is going to be unacceptable, or B, buying a Tesla. So if we take a look at Tesla's website and you check out something like the Model 3, which is their most affordable vehicle, and you click order now, let's just try and configure this. So let's say I don't want the long range. Let's say I'm willing to stop and charge more often. You're still looking at a car that's $40,000. Again, I don't count the potential savings thing in the very beginning, but even if you do, that's still $44,000 over here in contrast to a vehicle that starts at $18,000. If we're talking about something that's affordable, if you're poor, if you're lower middle class, if you're looking to save money, a savings of $20,000 plus probably really, really matters to you. Again, I'm not in the same place now that I was in 2009. In 2009, when I started this business, I had 268 bucks. I think approximately like 600 or 1,000 or so, something like that in, in total debt across credit cards, and I made a few hundred dollars a week. I was broke. I'm very far from being there, but I still remember what that was like, and I guarantee you that that amount of money is an amount of money that actually matters. Now, let's say that you are actually willing to wait overnight. You are actually willing to not supercharge along the way like you can when you're using Tesla's network. You're willing to just deal with, okay, I'm going to have to find a hotel. Let's say we, we reduce minimum power to zero. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be willing to, I don't know, go here, wait overnight, here wait overnight, here, wait overnight, here, wait overnight, and so on and so forth. Let's just take a look at the other brands. And again, I don't think most people are going to want to do that. I think the availability of Tesla's charging network is why it's one of the most popular electric vehicles on the road. But let's just get an idea. Let's just go over other brands. So let's say that we take a look at Nissan. Now, Nissan has an electric vehicle, the Leaf, and it says starting MSRP is $27,400. Let's try building it and pricing it to get an idea of what the options are that are available with the Leaf. Now, if you get the cheapest leaf, the 27,400 uh, leaf, let's just see, what, what range do you get? Because uh, Tesla does this deceptive thing where they will show you the speed of their fastest one, but also the range of the slower one all on the same page. I hate that shit. Uh, if you, if you, so I'm always kind of wary when I'm, when I'm going through car websites. You see this? They show you the speed of the performance model over here, but they show you the range of the long range model. The range of the performance model is lower than this. It's closer to 320 something. And the speed of the one that has this range is closer to 4.2 seconds. So again, car, car websites are just something else. So let's just, so I clicked on this model and let's see if it will tell me the range on this one model once I click through next and everything because I just want to make sure what I'm getting for the 28,000. Okay, so again, it says 226 miles on the main page, but that's if you get the upgraded one with the 62 kilowatt hour battery. The 40 kilowatt hour battery is only giving you 149 miles of range, which even if you're willing to wait overnight to charge is gonna be really, really painful on a route like this. You're not gonna be able to get much of anywhere. If you actually want to get the one that has a little bit more range, you're gonna need the 62 kilowatt hour battery. And when we do the pricing over here, again, the, the 28,000, the 28,000, those are not the ones with the bigger battery. You're going to need to spend 32,400 or above. And again, 
even if you do spend over $32,000 on a LEAF, you're still getting a range of 226 miles, assuming that they're accurate. And do keep in mind that when Tesla claims that their range is 358 miles, you'll be lucky to get 310 or 320, if that, in the real world, as opposed to what it says on the website. So God only knows if you're actually going to get 226 miles out of a LEAF. But to get 226 miles out of a LEAF, you're going to be looking at over $32,000. And again, that is considerably less range than you get on this vehicle, which costs over $13,000 less. So that is something to keep in mind. Now we go over to Ford. So let's check out Ford. So we're going to go and check out their electric vehicle over here. So Mustang Mach-E, order now. Mm. I don't know what it is. I, I, I genuinely prefer the web. Some, sometimes I really yearn for the web of the late 90s and early 2000s. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but I really miss when websites just loaded instantly. Like this, is a, this is an AMD Threadripper with Fios, and it still takes this long to load a website because they have to make it look all fancy and stuff. And at the end of the day, it really doesn't look much better than what the web used to look like. Small rant. So let's just say that we take a look at this. So let's say we select their cheapest electric vehicle. This is uh, it says the newest order delivery. Okay, firstly, again, you, you're waiting 20 weeks to get the car. That's not exactly something I would say is, uh, is great. But let's say I get the standard one, right? So the standard one gets you 247 miles. 247 miles for $43,000. 247 miles for $43,000. Now, if you were to just take a look at some of their other vehicles, if we were to look at something else, like, I don't know, an Escape or a Bronco, or literally or Explorer, or pretty much any other vehicle that they offer, you'll see that all of their ICE vehicles, which again, all of these cars are going to get well over 300 miles of range, they will beat that Mach-E on range, are in the, anywhere from $6,000 cheaper, $10,000 cheaper, like $14,000, $15,000 cheaper. All of these vehicles are way more affordable. Again, this, this is almost $20,000 cheaper, and this car is going to get you better range than the Ford Mach-E. Let's move on to another company. Let's just check out something like Chevy. So let's go vehicles. Let's go cars. Okay, so let's see. What, what are they? Here we go. Electric. For some reason, I thought Spark was electric because Spark kind of sounds like something that happens with electricity, but not great branding there. So let's say we get something like the Bolt. Let, I, I personally wouldn't want a Bolt because they, it seems like, you know, they've... They claim they bought their batteries from LG, but it seems like they're getting them from unit pack power from, <laughs> from what's been happening with some of their bolts, which just kind of, they, they have a tendency to go on fire in, the, in your driveway. Okay, so you have EPA estimated range of 251 miles, starting at 31,000. And again, I just want to make it as shown 34,000. So I just want to get an idea of whether or not this range is actually accurate. Because again, they'll, they'll, they'll post the lowest price on the homepage with the highest range without telling you that you got to pay extra to get that range. So let's just say I'm in, you know, I'm here, and let's see. Yeah, so EPA estimated range 251, 259 miles for $31,000. Again, this is not enough range for you to be able to make this road trip without sleeping overnight. If you wanted to do this road trip, you are going to, if you want to be able to make this road trip in a similar fashion that you would to a, an internal combustion engine vehicle, you are going to need to have a, a Tesla or again, a internal combustion engine vehicle until the charging stations are better. You know, people are going to say like, it's not, why are you using rural Montana as an example? Because it's a road trip, you know, again, it's, uh, if, if you want to claim that it's, it's just as affordable for everybody in the nation, then you, you really have to consider the use cases. And a cross-country road trip to, uh, through a very, very beautiful and remote area of the nation is, a, is most certainly a valid use case. And again, when we're talking about the options, if you want to buy a car from Chevy, you can buy a Malibu, which is considerably cheaper than the Bolt. You can buy a Camaro if you want something fast, which is cheaper than the Bolt. You can buy a truck, which is cheaper than the Bolt. And you, every single one, you can buy a Spark. And every single one of these is going to have longer range than the Bolt. Now, a lot of you have likely been screaming at your screen at this point saying, Lewis, poor people are not going to buy new cars. They're going to buy a used car. 100%. Let's continue with that. So if we were to continue just checking out used cars, let's say we check out a 2013, something like a 2013 Toyota Corolla. Toyota Corolla is a common car for somebody who want to get in the used market. Buy something that's close to 10 years old, you save a little bit of money. 
You can pay 10,000, 11,000, 12,000, and you can have a vehicle. Now let's say you wanna buy a used electric car, right? Let's just say you wanna get something used electric, save some money, something similar to that Toyota Corolla, which by the way, that Toyota Corolla is gonna get at least 350 miles. If you got a full gas tank in a eight-year-old Toyota Corolla, 350 miles is probably a conservative estimate. Now, if you wanna buy a used electric car, about nine years old or so, take a look at this, you could get a Nissan Leaf for eleven dollars or $12,000. That's affordable, right? Well, you got 350 miles of range with the other one. How much range do you think you're going to get with this? If we're talking about a 300 or a 2013 or a 2014 model Nissan Leaf, this vehicle is likely to have a range that is so low that they are not actually going to advertise it. You're looking at somewhere around approximately 75 miles to 100 miles of range on these older vehicles. Let's just see. Will it, will it actually advertise it? So if you type in the word mile, mileage, okay, it says how many miles there are on the vehicle, but it won't tell you that. They're, they're not gonna tell you that. Because it's one of those things like Comcast and their internet speed, they're not gonna tell you what the upstream is unless you call them. Here we go. So range, 75 miles, battery only. And that's assuming we have zero battery degradation. I'm gonna assume right there that, yeah, that that battery has not degraded at all. Let's just assume it's full battery, 75 miles. That is functionally useless to people in so many parts of the country. Even if charging were literally instant, let's just assume that in every charger station, you don't have to wait, you plug it in and within five seconds the battery is full. 75 miles of range in so many parts of the country is a toy. My electric bike, which I have three batteries in parallel on, will give me 90 miles of range, even if I drive it a little crazy. 90, I can, I'll get 90 miles out of my bike. This is 75 out of a car. And you know, if that battery is nine years old, that's degraded to a considerable point. Let's look at something like a Tesla because Teslas are one of the more popular electric vehicles. So what I've done here is I've told eBay Motors, I only want buy it now. And I want between 5,000 to 14,000 just to get rid of, you know, the really like, you know, car parts and stuff like that. And to see what's available in this proximate range. So you have a battery pack, not a car, the battery pack, a battery. You have a drive unit from what looks like a semi-totaled car over there, uh, and you get parts. Again, like the idea that you are going to get a used electric car in the you know the eleven to fifteen thousand dollar range, the same way that it's standard and common for people across the country to purchase an internal combustion engine vehicle used for 5000 to 15000 if they can't afford new, that is just not available to you unless you want what is, in my opinion, a toy car. A car that is over eight years old with a degraded battery that gave you 75 miles when it was new, in my opinion, that's a toy car. You can say what you'd like. I think once you get above 170, 200 miles, you have something that's usable. And once you get over 350 miles, you have something that's comparable to the technology that we've all been used to this entire time, which is being able to get 350 miles out of a car in one go. But yeah, the, the use the market for electric vehicles is virtually non-existent at that bottom rung that is essential to get many people in the country to adopt them as a viable option. And that is completely left out of the discussion. Now, I know what many people are going to say. Well, Lewis, that's not fair. Electric vehicles haven't been around that long. Obviously, Teslas from 2013 and 14 have been for sale. They're just way more expensive than that. Let's say they haven't been around that long. It's newer technology. It's not fair to compare that. But fairness doesn't enter the conversation here at all. We're talking about whether or not they are affordable. We're not talking about whether it's fair that they're not affordable. I'm confident that people who were lower middle class or poor because insurance didn't cover a medical bill or insurance didn't cover a disaster that happened to their house or something horrible happened to them or whatever it is, I'm sure that a lot of poor people out there probably don't think it's fair that they're poor. But if they go into a dealership or they go into a Tesla showroom and they say, I want that long range Model 3. It's not fair that I can't afford it. Can you make it $11,000? It's not going to help them. What people do is they don't, they, fairness has nothing to do with the equation when we're talking about purchasing a vehicle. What matters is reality. What people do is they look inside of their wallet, they look at what it is they need, and then they look at the landscape of everything that's available, and they make the best possible decision they can with what is in their wallet, what their needs are, and what's available. What's fair 
really doesn't enter into that equation because it doesn't change what's in their wallet, it doesn't change the price of what they're purchasing, and it doesn't change what they need. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if it's fair or it's unfair. What matters is reality. And at the end of the day, as much as I love electric vehicles, as much as I think that they are cool, that doesn't mean that for people who are broke, they are just as affordable as internal combustion engine vehicles. There is a tax that you pay when you purchase an electric vehicle as an early adopter. And yes, they've been around for over 10 years at this point, but ICE cars have been around for over 100. So you are kind of an early adopter. There is an early adopter tax that you are paying, and that makes them fundamentally less affordable. Are they more affordable now than they were 10 years ago? Absolutely. Are they going to continue to become more affordable as battery technology becomes cheaper as it has over the past 30 years? 100%. They're definitely going to become cheaper. Technology always gets cheaper as time goes on. But to state that at this point in time that somebody who's complaining about the affordability of an electric vehicle is being ridiculous because you do have affordable electric vehicles. Look, look, Lewis, I looked one up. There's a vehicle over there that's only $35,000. Yes, and it has lower range than a car that costs $14,000 less than that. And that matters to people who are poor. It does. To pretend that the affordability problem doesn't exist, it gaslights people who are actually poor. And what it does is it makes them less likely to ever want an electric vehicle because then you have this little culture war associated with it, which is like, what? Wait a second. So you think having to pay $14,000 extra for a vehicle is, doesn't make it affordable? What are you, poor? That's how it comes off as. When somebody says, when somebody makes a comment, when somebody over here says, I don't believe you've done any research in this topic, not knowing anything about you, based on the fact that I found three on the market for less than $45,000 in less than two minutes of research. When you make a comment that is so ignorant so as to suggest that simply because a car exists at $35,000, that that fixes the problem. That's ridiculous. You're, you're gaslighting poor people, and you're gaslighting people that simply may actually be affluent, like my friend, that still drive a Jetta, because at, at heart, they're just cheap fucks, and I respect them, and I love them for it. But this makes no sense. Oh, okay, so congratulations. It exists at $35,000. That doesn't make it affordable if an internal combustion engine vehicle with similar interior trim, similar, similar features and functionality exists for $15,000 less. When you can show me a vehicle that costs $18,000 that has a decent charging network, that has over 350 miles of range, when you can then show me a used vehicle that costs between five to $14,000 that has over 350 miles of range that is electric, then at that point, I think we can start to have the discussion about the f real affordable electric vehicle options. But as long as that lower rung just fundamentally doesn't exist in a practical way, I think it is really disingenuous to say that electric vehicles are now affordable, and I think it really is just kicking dust in the face of people who don't have that extra money to spend. To people to whom an additional ten or $15,000 actually makes a real fucking difference in their yearly budget, or dare I say, maybe even their decade-long budget. And I think it's something to consider. Again, I've spoken about the cars that I like. I will leave a link down below to a very long video that I did. What matters here is not just thinking about the decision-making process that you make from your perspective, but also thinking about it from other people's perspective. There are many problems in the world that are solvable, but they're only solvable if we admit that they're problems and we don't just pretend they're not because it doesn't affect us. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if any of my terminology here has been off when it comes to automobiles, I've gotten anything blatantly obviously wrong, because again, I am not pretending to be a car guy here, please do let me know and I will include a pinned comment that clarifies anything that I got wrong. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.